Birds 365, day after Eagle victory. With John McMullen, I'm Jerry McDonald. Joining us is our boy, Chris Franklin from NJ.com. And in the background, we got the T for Trenton. Remember, Trenton makes the world takes. Uh, so we thank Chris for helping. What, you never heard that before? <laughs> yeah, I have. Yeah, I'm actually in Mullica Hill. I, yeah. I, I'm in the South Jersey Times team. I'm, yeah. I'm down South in Mullica Hill. Times. Why Trenton. did I yeah. think the T was for Trenton? Yeah. I write for there too, but it shows up in there. But yeah, this is uh, the T from the old Gloucester Times building. So that's why they still they took it from there. County okay. Times. I thought it was yeah. for Trenton. My bad. Uh, but no birds, which <laughs> yeah. kind of stinks. Uh, with the, the only birds are me and McMullen. Eagle birds, not uh, <laughs> Franklin birds in the backyard. Uh, so glad, glad you're inside in front of a T, whatever the hell it stands for. Uh, could T stand for timeout? Yeah, Jody, keep talking about the undefeated Eagles, but. They really could have lost that game. If if Riverboat Rod had him hanging and went for a two-point conversion and converted, Philadelphia Eagles lose that game yesterday. How do you look at the game, Chris Franklin? They did luck out, I think, in that aspect. I th- really, I was surprised they really didn't go for two because I think they had all yeah. the momentum on their side. It, it looked like the defense was a little bit shell-shocked at the end. They were gassed. They, they, they were having that whole entire drive with it going down a field like that. I really thought they, sh- they should have gone for two, and I thought they it was a very good chance that they could have, but especially the way they were actually getting timely runs. They weren't just – the commanders weren't just like basically going down the field and ram- ramming the ball down the throw the times, but when they needed the first down, they were able to get it. So I, I put that – that loss was that, – that, that loss was all on Ron Rivera, in my opinion, for the commanders. Yeah, I, I would have went for it, and I have – but I, I, if I could rip it off as like a an old school military uniform, that nickname, I'd rip it off Ron Rivera. I'd rip off Riverboat. <laughs> Can't call him that anymore. Nope. That's embarrassing. You got to try to steal that game. <laughs> but uh, since we're birds 365, I want to talk about the Eagles coaching staff and their decision. So second and four from the Washington 28, 149 left. The commanders have one timeout. Jalen Hurts, I believe, check to that on his own. Uh, touchdown to A.J. Brown. Should they have just run the ball and whittled the time off and said, all right, let's get out of here with the Jake Elliott field goal? Where are you on how they handled that situation? I would have gone, I would have done the same thing personally. And the reason why I would have done that is because I think when you look at what you have on this defense and you expect them to be able to make a stop, especially against Sam Howe, they weren't able to do that, which was did, 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 a little concerning. Did you watch the first 59 minutes of the game? Sam Howe, Sam Howe moved it pretty damn well against the defense, and you're praising here, Chris Franklin. Hey, I'm looking at it. When it comes to Sam Howe, I still think that the Eagles made him look a little bit better than what he really was. But I think when he come down to that last drive, he should have been they, – they, that, they, that last drive should never happen. They should have been able to stop him a couple times. And I look at that, and I'm just like, you know, that's it's concerning to me, especially when you – if this was, say, the Dolphins, if this is the Bills or something else, we're talking about a loss here. So I don't have a problem with them going for a touchdown because that defense should have stopped them. Uh, you should have had a conference your defense with all those – And A.J. shouldn't get should have had the awning penalty to make things easier. Uh, that was the bigger key, yeah, because then you got to push them back. Yeah, that, that, that probably cost – that probably went another five, ten – like two or three plays, they would have had to run to even get down to the to the to the end zone. So yeah, that was all. That was all I had. Yeah, yeah. Um, now, when you talk about uh, that particular sort of aspect, and then you get to overtime, I thought two things. I thought at the end of regulation, it was pretty clear that uh, after. Sam Howell realized his mistake and threw short of the end zone. Either Eric B. Enemy got in his ear or whatever and said, this has got to go to the end zone. And it's pretty clearly Washington was looking at, all right, wherever Josh Job is, that's where the ball's going. And it was a heck of a throw. It wasn't like it was terrible coverage. It was a good throw by Sam Howell. Long term, though, Chris, they got to fix this secondary, don't they? You can't keep piecemealing with James Bradbury in the slot. I, I don't think that's going to work. I think you, you may have to go back to having Bradbury just go outside like because he's just too valuable right now. I understand if it was more of a short-term thing, yeah, I get this, but more and more you're starting to see it now. Or have the guy who, who's more familiar with it in the middle 
I don't know, I, I keep hearing like Ringo playing safety and stuff like that and moving him possibly in there. I mean, you hear other guys, you, you Sidney Brown was in there beforehand and everything else. Yeah, I think you just need to get, change it up. So you got to change things up because it's, it, teams are just going to continually to pick them apart. And it's going, and I look at Joe, he's done well at times. You see the physicality and you see where he can become. But they're picking on him right now, and teams are going to continue to pick on him. No one I see. Do I go Darius Slay or go Josh Joe? I want to go to Josh over all those times. All right. Want to get your take on this, John? I've been debating it a little bit here for the first hour and change the show. Acknowledging ahead of time, one affects the other. The defensive line affects the linebackers. Linebackers affect the safety. The safeties and the D-backs are affected by the defensive line and the pressure. We get it. Uh, across the, the every single game, every single play, 11 guys are there as a unit, but we break them down into separate units on top of it. If you stand alone and not, not acknowledge and or hold it against other units as to how they play, secondary linebackers, Eagles defensive line, ranked the way that they played for you yesterday, one, two, and three. I look at the linebackers as one. I think Nick Morrow, the way that he stood out, the way he stepped up since coming back, I look at him, I think that was good. Defensive line probably would be number two and secondary would be three. And I look at the way the defensive line did. I, they got pressure, but it looked like it was a c- uncontrolled pressure at times where you expect, like, how, like, you expect like, the D tackle sometimes to, to, to not let them to open up that hole in the middle and the ends lost contained in there as well too they weren't able to sack get they should have had at least two or three more sacks they should they, they wound up with so I look at that and then the secondary overall i just look at that especially on the back end i, I had i thought there's too many issues that were going on in there and i mean terry mclaurin's a really good receiver john dodson is an up and coming one but there's there are guys that you should be able to contain Here's why I say the uh, defensive line was worse than the secondary yesterday. I'm grading on a curve because the defense secondary is down. How many guys? No Brown yesterday. No Maddox yesterday. Uh, no Evans yesterday. Uh, so they're missing three key components going into the game. Who was the defensive line missing? Nobody. And, oh, by the way, the Eagles defensive line is supposed to be the best unit in all of football. And they didn't play like it yesterday. So if you factor in grading on a curve as per expectations, I actually thought their defensive line was the weakest unit they had. Fair, fair point. But at the same time, I look at them. I, I look at the the way that they were trying to the, like the way they were trying to attack them. I don't know. I don't put so much. I think it's just more. It, it was more of a discipline when it came to the rush. I think that was the main thing. That that, that was the main thing I looked at. I took away from that and. The secondary part, I get what you're saying, especially with not now having Brown in there, it's some issues. But you still look at a guy, you still look at the guys they have in there, and they're still talented enough to beat this. They're, they're the Eagles secondary, talent wise, is better than watching Commanders. They didn't play like it yesterday, though. They really didn't. All right, let's talk about those linebackers, Chris. Middle split the difference. Um, and Nick Morrow, man, playing well. You know, he gets the safety. In Tampa, he's got three sacks. I looked it up. He had 3,600 career snaps at four coming into that game. Gets three in this game. Um, Seth Joyner, who knows a little bit about linebacker play, asked me on our postgame show, and I admit I was taken aback, um, is he play, playing well enough to usurp Nicobe Dean? I said, no way. No way, Seth. Um, is he playing well enough to keep himself in this lineup? I think he is in the fact that you he'd be good on third downs. I I, I think Dean's more Dean's supposedly uh, is like supposed to be their third down their three down linebacker, but the way he's playing right now, I'd probably when Dean comes back, play him first and second downs. And runs get him get the set in defense and then bring Morrow in a third down because he gives you that ability not only to rush the passer if you want to blitz him, but also still be able to cover sideline to sideline and still be effective in doing that. So I don't think he's I don't think he should be the full time starter when he comes back, but I think there's ways they should be able to incorporate him into that defense because he still his skill set it, it lends itself to do pretty well and and I think he plays well with Cunningham. I, I just think he does. All right, even in a game that they had to win in overtime, 
I think a lot of Eagle fan spears were late a little bit because Jalen Hurts threw the football really well yesterday. Uh, those who, well, what happened to the passing game? Great job, Swift. But we used to be able to throw the ball for 300 yards every single week. He threw it for 300 yards yesterday. So well, I'm here to sing uh, Jalen Hurts with praises, except for one aspect, and that's his running the football. I had one a thing of beauty, 24-yard run, looked like the Jalen of last year. But he also had a couple of plays where he's sliding and not getting first downs. The tush push is still great. I get it. But it seems like the running game of his, the RPO game, is is the coordinator just calling more RPO runs or is Jalen just not taking the ball back and keeping it himself more? Uh, he has not been uber impressive. Part of what made him the MVP runner-up last year was his ability to make plays with his legs. Has not been a big factor in the first four weeks for the Eagles. Why? When he looks at the zone read part of it, it's, it look, hey, I think it's just the way they're trying to basically they're forcing him to give the ball up. They're like the way the way they're trying to play the, the read. They rather try to get in the middle. Which to me, I was like, okay, why are you gig forcing to get the ball to DeAndre Swift the way he's running right now? Yeah. That's just ah, that's, that's not on that one. But I also think it just looks it just looks like he's trying to be make a more concerted ver- uh, attempt to just slide and everything. And I I don't know what's I don't know if it was told that, hey, you know, protect yourself more. Hey, uh, you need to, we need you around for the full season, but that around the corner, just not as effective. It's not that same spark that he, that he's had, that he had last year and, and getting around the corner. And I understand, hey, I understand sliding more to protect yourself, but it, it's something, it's part schematic that they want to give him, get forced out on, but also when it comes to him running, it's just, it, it's off right now. It, it truly isn't. I, I don't know. I don't think you have. I don't think you need to run quarterback sweeps like you've run an old student body and just have them do that. But it's it's a little off. <laughs> yeah, uh, it is a little bit off. And I think you're right. I think opposing to certainly in the first three weeks. I mean, there was a clear sort of game plan from all three of those guys to say, "All right, we're not going to let Jalen Hurts beat us uh, in the running game," um, and we'll see if that continues. Now. In the before times, we used to say this was the quarter pole of the season. We can't say that anymore. Just yeah. stupid 17 games. Odd but games. <laughs> none, nonetheless, Chris, in the passing game, which, yeah, I think Jody's right. I think everybody breathes a sigh of relief. AJ's just beaten up on poor Emmanuel Forbes. Um, Devontae Smith making big plays again. They can't get Dallas Goddard involved. This is four games now. What at what point do we press the panic button there? It's all they're all try, all they're trying to do is take away the middle of the field. Defenses are really trying to take away that middle of the field. And it's going to be it's it's going to the point where now you feel like you have to almost force him to get if you take him touches, you have to run tight end screens and and, and little slants when he's running a slot because all, they're just compounding everything in the middle because they used to be so effective when it comes to those crossing routes, those meshes, and everything else that teams are like. You ain't beating us with that because you're not getting ahead of steam on that. So we want you to go vertical, and they're doing it, stopping away from the middle. So unless you start trying to change stuff where you put maybe uh, Brown or or, uh, Smith in the slot more and you have him on the outside, try to get a matchup at corner, which to me, I'm I'm not the biggest fan for him for doing that, but you may have to do that to at least try to get him some targets. So, But if if at least if they don't get anything done – Especially against against his Rams defense, a, and then when, in the next couple against the Jets eventually too, I'm I'm really going to start raising the, the ringing the alarm. I both of you guys were there yesterday, so I don't know if you actually saw it, but it was well reported. Cam Jurgens leaves in a walking boot after the yep. game. Um, he went out close to half. Yeah. Uh, I know Sua Peta took sixty plus percent of the snaps yesterday, and as far as I could tell. Did a nice job. Uh, no different for me in watching the game. Uh oh, wow. Jerkins is out. They got a hole. I on thought the they played line. better actually when uh, Sua came in. But uh, you know, I yeah, I thought he held up pretty well. Is he the unquestioned guy being plugged in there? Because all we talked about in preseason was, well, is it going to be Jerkins or Tyler Steen? Jerkins or Tyler Steen? Well, yesterday, Tyler Steen inactive. Opeta up steps in, plays well. If Jurgens is going to miss some time, is it a given that Opet is uh, the new right guard? 
I think I think so because and, and to me, I always be shocked because if you asked me before the season, I probably thought Jack Driscoll probably would have been that guy, but he looks more to be the backup swing tackle now. But I like the way that the way that Opeta came in and stepped up. I, I was shocked, and I I got to give him credit because when you look at what in previous years when he would come in, the pass blocking was the biggest question you had about him because he always would get beat inside and that, and then he's just like he's fixed it. At least he did this week, and, and I think he did a lot better, and I think he's warranted the chance to be able to start now it's going to be like one of those hey welcome you congratulations you get to start here's aaron donald enjoy Ooh, which is yeah. going to be a, again, uh, I, I thought that yeah. far in advance you had to bring yeah. that up but great frankly yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so it's it's he'll be really tested they'll probably give him help i mean you have to give him help because yeah. you don't want him to get that much you have to give him help because you know aaron donald is that good of a player but for at least for him being able to step in the way he played technique wise and he was pardon the pun, but he was very stout. Now you mentioned, and you're right. I mean, it, it's, and you know how people overreact, whoever, whomever, um, Tyler Steen, uh, Jack Driscoll, Sue Opeta, Cam Jurgens, insert name, mm -hmm. Zach Martin. They're going to have trouble against Aaron Donald. That's how good Aaron Donald is. Uh, so it's not necessarily about this week for me, but long term, you know how this works, Chris. You got a plan coming into the game, and you mentioned Jack Driscoll. Well, he's the, the swing tackle coming in. The, you know, Tyler Steen um, uh, isn't active. Now you, you get to prepare. You can have these conversations. Well. Is Jack the better way to go? Is Tyler the better way to go? Or is Sua the better? Do you think they 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 seriously consider a different route than Sua Opeta? Or no, that's just the way we're going to go. I think that's going to be the way they – the only other one I'd want to be Jack. That's it. I, Tyler Sheen to me is still a little too green. And I think he looked better in the fact that he was getting a lot more – snaps at the tackle spot yeah, during training better camp. left tackle yeah yeah so i i he, he's still green he's, he's still learning that right guard position so the only other person i could see taking up over would be jack driscoll but even then the fact that they threw in they threw in opetta right away usually it used to be automatic ups coming in jack you go out there now but the fact that opetta has played himself into that into that role i think he's the one by I the way the i didn't guy. think about that but i saw cam after the game and i saw him in the walking booth you yeah. didn't think he saw Aaron Donald on the schedule and say, let me put on this one. <laughs> <laughs> That's the best case in that. I'm joking, by the way. <laughs> cough, Cam cough. Oh, no, I had the flu. No, nah, Cam, uh, Cam's one of those gamers, man. He, he wouldn't do that, but that, it, the timing stinks for him. I know that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right, Chris. Uh, there was a story floating around after the game yesterday um, that uh, Derek Barnett's agent, is lobbying for the flexibility to check out if there's a trade available for Derek Barnett at this stage as we head toward the trade deadline. Just strike my memory a little bit here. Haven't we gone down this road? Didn't the Eagles grant Derek Barnett and his agents any trade for him prior to the start of the season before they cut the roster down and they found nothing? Uh, let's see. What has Derek Barnett done through four games? Nothing. So why would there now be a trade market for Derek Barnett? Is this just a complete agent-created story? Especially with the necessity. It's hard to believe we're only a few weeks away from the trade deadline. So you need so with these teams as they as we've seen the attrition that's happening around the league with some of these injuries, is he going to be one of the top names? I don't think top, he will. Top I, that's what, that's top, what I'm saying. Yeah, I'm saying names, I don't think he will names. at all. I know. <laughs> I'm the Eagles. I'm going to ask for six oranges. I'm going to settle for three. That's what I would trade Derek Barnett. <laughs> I, I, it's one of those I maintain, things. Where... I still maintain they will get a late round pick for Derek Barnett. There are so many bad defensive lines out there. Somebody will pull the trigger if the Eagles want to move on. Um, I think he's on his roster. I think yeah. he stays. Uh, he's going to stay, and it's you know he. he I know I understand it's frustrating, but you got to play your way in, especially with the uh, this defensive line is deep, and 
I know he's got a lot of incentives that he has to hit, but it's just going to be tough to hit him the way that everybody's rolling through it now. No, yeah. And by the way, what you, we we were discussing that a little bit. I I was not as disappointed in the defensive front as others. When you look at it individually, not Derek, but um, I thought Brandon Graham played well. I thought Jalen Carter still impacted the game even though it wasn't on the stat sheet you know Hassan Reddick finally got home I thought Josh Sweat had a nice bounce back um from the Tristan Wirfs game who's a really good player um why did it not manifest itself on the stat sheet or do you think the the, the commanders put up 31 points you gotta factor that in too I thought that you know I, the one thing I, I the one thing I didn't understand what the enemy was doing. I thought it was working well early on, getting the ball out to the flats and, and, and getting the ball quickly. And we saw that, and especially with a court with a quarterback who stays in there, who's been hit a lot already and been sacked a lot. It was just it was just I think it was just a matter of the lack of contain. It was a lack of contain, lack of discipline in the rush lanes, and lack of discipline on the outside. I mean, don't get wrong. You've, if I'm seeing a sack, I know because given how much you get paid for sacks and the bonuses and everything else, yeah, I'd go for it too. I'd try to run it out, but it just looks like they all go in and they forgot. He just stepped up, made one move, and just eluded them. And actually, you know, he, he had everybody else. Man, he, he can hurt. move, Sam Howell. He can move. Um, yeah. I I I was impressed by Sam Howell. I give Ed Kratz credit for that one. He was on ground floor of Team Sam Howell. I was pretty impressed. I think. Uh, He's got a chance to be a pretty good quarterback. Um, All right, and I so thought he had a nice Let me get you on the record game. here, Johnny Mac, both you and Ed Kratz. And we'll have Ed Kratz on uh, next week. Who does Washington play this upcoming week? I don't. I uh, look it up uh, real quick. I think they're Thursday, aren't they? Are they against the Bears on Thursday? Uh, I know the Bears play Thursday. You're right about that. Let me punch up. Yep, Command- Bears, Bears Commanders. Yep. Yeah, Bears, Bears commanders. commanders. All right. So against that god awful Bears defense, and I, I watched a little of it yesterday. They're <laughs> they terrible. TJ Edwards at all are just awful. Sam Howell going for three hundred next week. He's gonna go back to back. He should be if he is this new found star quarterback in the league. I didn't he say he was go. a star. I thought I said he's got a chance. I was pretty impressed with him, uh, but. Yeah, I mean, why not? Bears are terrible. Yeah, they're a dumpster uh, fire. I got two seventy five. I'll put it. With three I'll put it. I'll put it at two seventy five. Three hundred's tough. They might be able. You know why, Jody? I go a little bit lower because they'll probably be able to run the ball against Chicago as well. So you, that'll you can pick and choose the way you want to move the ball against. Yeah, the exactly. Bears. You can do whatever you want. Pass. So uh, <laughs> that might affect uh, the passing game. Oh, but we should bring uh, Terry McLaurin. What did the Eagles get helped out by the lack of prime time extra video, or was that the greatest, uh, the best play uh, of Marcus Mariota? His head getting in the way of the one angle, um, helping the Eagles win. Where are you on the Terry McLaurin catch in overtime or non catch? I had no problem with <laughs> it. Was- they they benefited from that surely. I thought it was a, I thought personally I thought it was a catch, but so did I. I, I, thought, I thought it was a catch, it. and I thought it. the fact is, I was like, okay, all right, whatever. That was you know, but I, I I thought it was a catch. And so was overall, he just kills his team every year in the year out. He's that good right. of a wide yeah. receiver, and I just feel bad. I feel bad for him in a way that he didn't have. He hasn't had a, a legitimate quarterback that he could build real chemistry with. Maybe that's with how he does that now, but. I, it, if you look at the enemy's offenses, and I forget who I was talking to about this, I forget who I talked about this, maybe it's Slay, somebody else said. When you look at the enemy's offenses, he usually has that one guy that he goes to, like it was Tyree Kill when he was in with the Chiefs. It was like, yeah, it's like Tyree Kill with the Chiefs. And they usually have that one guy. He could turn into a, he's not the burner that Hill is, but he can be a, an effective wide receiver in the system. I said this before the season. I really think they could be a seven season sneak in if they get on a on a run. They're that good of a team. It's just the Eagles should have dominated more than what he's had. This should, it should have never been this close because the Eagles should be a one seed or two seed, and you shouldn't be that close with a seven seed, especially this early in the season. 
with revenge on their mind because Washington beat them in their house last year. What's the record of Jalen Hurts as a starter, John, in the regular season? Uh, well, his overall record, I don't have it. He's 21 of the 21. past 22 they've won. 21 and 1. Starter. He's, got the best, he's got the best record for a starting quarterback since 2021. So even if you go the whole season. And that one regular season loss was to the Commanders last year yeah. at Lincoln Financial Field. So the Eagles should have been playing with revenge on their mind yesterday. They sneak out with a victory, a victory just the same. Um, I'll give them their props for getting to 4-0. and But you, you remind me, Aaron Donald on the offing next week. Um, yes, it's going to be on Jason Kelsey and whoever they decide to plug in there. Any other fields with threat? You're going to... You going to stay up nights watching film on Puka Nakoa, the yeah, uh, new star wide receiver? You have to. There you have for to. 500 yards in four weeks. And you're getting Cooper Cup supposedly coming back as well, too, next week. So the secondary better get stuff together right away because – the two of them, it's not a flashy, flashy offense, but it's, it's one of those things that where. Trump is coming back. Is that official or is he just. Eligible? I was watching last night. They said that they expect him to, they expect him to play. He's not official yet, but they expect him to play next week. So it's, he's getting closer and closer. And if he plays, he, he should, he shouldn't be gangbusters right off the bat, but he can be, if he's even effective enough, this game could be, this because we could be watching the, uh, and Another now, uh, game. evidently, Another Matthew one. Stafford got pretty dinged up in in the game yesterday. So, yeah, like a was... hip with a hip flex or some pointer or yeah. something like that. Yeah, yeah. which <laughs> which for the Eagles, thankfully, is not a mobile quarterback. Because at least you know with him, he's pretty much going to be stationary for the most part. So that should that should help the defensive line at least. Yeah, but he can sling it, man. Oof. I mean, yeah. he, he's going <laughs> to go if he's healthy. He's going to go after Josh Job. There's going to be a target. Uh, and he's got, especially if Cup is out there, um, he's got a few targets. This could be a more difficult game than people realize for the Eagles if if Matthew Stafford's healthy, um, and that's a big if. We'll have to see as the as the week goes on. Um, I'll leave it here with you at C Franklin News. Make sure you follow Chris. Does a tremendous job all over the Trent Times as well. Uh, all over South Jersey. T for Trenton. NJ.com. <laughs> um, T for Gloucester uh, Township. Is it Gloucester Township? It was the Gloucester County Times. Gloucester yeah. County Times. Right. Home of the Rupert Franks. There you go. <laughs> uh, uh, Jake Elliott. We, we got to talk about Jake. The MVP of the Philadelphia Eagles, Jake Elliott. I saw him kick a 72-yard field goal in practice last week. Uh, 54 when he was on, when he was trotting on the field, any doubt that Jake Elliott was making that field goal? Because I was like, eh, this game's over. Game's over. No, nah, I thought if he's one of those guys where you just go, you know what? Yeah, it, especially if, if it's, I'd probably been more worried if it was like 40 41, just because of what happens in the past beforehand where it seems like he, he, he used to hook it. But now back from like from 50 plus, it's like, yeah. I, I got no problem. The only time I start, I start to try worry is like if he's trying to kick a sixty-five in a hole, and that's where like, all right, maybe that's his range. But he's shown like when you watch him pregame, it's it's crazy because you're looking like, oh, he's I can't make this one, especially in that one in the end zone. That's, Five nine okay. one sixty-seven, and he's bad. yeah, I mean, I, yeah, it's amazing. And that's and he the fact he kicked that into the tougher end because it's tougher to kick towards that end of the stadium than the other one, just because of that one too. The fact he was able to get it with that much leg. Yeah, you know, getting the guy is good, and he, he, he's he. When you look at now, all the, the I, now, I asked Jake good. that because I always get mixed up. I asked Jake that after the game. He said that way's the easier way because it's closed. <laughs> it's closed. It's enclosed. Whereas the side of the stadium pointed towards Center City is open, and there's more swirl. There's more opportunities for swirling winds. Uh, that's the thought process. I believe that, yeah. It seems like every time he goes down that way, he's had the issues. I'm like, what the heck? This kid, I just don't know, understand. Like, how do you walk in knowing that everybody and their mom's watching you? You're trying to get in. Oh, yeah, if you don't make this kick, yeah, uh, we're going to probably tie the commanders, which we're always going to. He just comes in every single pressure situation. It's just, he just, he bails, he knocks them in. 
my only concern was that if they had missed the field goal, my concern was actually for Braden Mann because he was going to get blamed for it. The hold was going to <laughs> If he didn't make that kick yet, it was going to be on the holder. Kind of like if Chris Franklin does a bad job recapping the game. He does yeah. so because he's worried John McMullen's going to spill coffee on him. That you, At some point, you just got to put put it where it belongs on the actual individual. But with uh, by with, by the way, Braden Mann, he's the exact same as Aaron Sipas. He's he can't punt, but he's a good holder. Uh, yeah, <laughs> he, he had that one. He had that one punt that was decent. Yeah, but like there was another one. one. Those first two, the first, yeah. the first. I was just like, he here we go. Get again. A lot of hang time. Uh, no. he he does not. Uh, he had the one time. nice punt. He did have yeah. one. One good pun and two not so good puns. Yeah. And that was his thing. He was supposed to bring coming in and give better hang time, and it happened so far. Not, not so far. <laughs> Chris Franklin, thank you very much for coming in with us today. Tell Gloucester Times, tell Trenton Times, tell your birds we said hi. Thank you much for jumping in with us today, big guy. Thanks. Oh, thanks. I'll, I'll pass the messages along. Thanks. <laughs> here with us on Birds 365. All right, got to come back, put a bow on the show. Last segment of Birds 365. Hey, before you go, I know you're going to run out of here. Hit that like button. Give us a little love. Hey, much like the Eagles, Mac and Mac. Well, that would be just flat out BS. I don't know that we're undefeated. But we're here for you every day at least, right? We show up. We show up every single day. That's and right. we'll come back and we'll put a bow on the show.